All right. It's time to head up to the abandoned temple. Also, got a question uh, in the comments about this from Descan. Descan? Regarding uh, skill advancement. So I'll explain that a bit better. As you level up, you gain access to skill points, which you can invest in your skills to improve them. However, I'm still only at the normal tiers, the normal skill expertise levels of all these skills, even though I've invested skill points. In order for me to upgrade to, say, Expert Dodging, I would need to find a skill trainer for Expert Dodging, uh, have, a, have the money required to pay that trainer to train Flailfist in Expert Dodging, and have a certain number of points invested in the dodging, in which case it would be four, at least four points. Th that could give me expert dodging. There's a few skills, uh, like say for example, bodybuilding, that will have other requirements, such as bodybuilding needs um, endurance. Or is it strength? I think it's endurance. Learning, I think, needs intelligence. I think something needs personality to it. Maybe that's might and magic six. There's only... Like... Alchemy, Alchemy Grandmaster requires, like, a few components, like, of one of each of the highest grade reagents in the game, which reagents are what you use to make potions. We haven't done a whole lot of that, because we haven't needed to. We don't have any alchemy skill, but anyone can use red, blue, and yellow reagents to make the simplest of potions. Except for Brent back here, who can't make red potions, doesn't know how to. Okay. Well, that clarifies that. We're going to cast Wizard Eye and uh, Torchlight, although these will not last for very long. The dripping of water and a strange, unidentifiable squeaking are the only noises that seem to come from the entrance to this cave. Let's do it. Do you hear that we're already in danger? Bring on the cake! Though danger is a word used use loosely. This here means that there is a secret that we can spot, that we can fiddle with or activate it. These are determined by... Um, you will spot like the red highlight if your perception is high enough. For Tutorial Island, you don't need any perception. You could still activate that chest even though uh, you didn't have any enough perception to spot it. But you would either have to know it was there from a prior playthrough, or just get lucky with random clicking. Hmm. We got a trash ring. We'll sell got it. it. We also are counted as having enough disarm trap to disarm these chests that we're going to find, even though we don't actually have disarm trap. Ah, this is worthless. Wait. Now, now the items aren't weird. I swear to you, I didn't change anything. <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't pay attention to the peasants. Maybe this was an example of uh, the launcher setting itself back to hardware 3D instead of software 3D. Ow, but I need it fixed. Without me noticing. Ow. That's it's too easy. Cut, but I need it fixed. Let's leave it behind. Got ourselves a crude bow here, which is not bad. Eventually, we'll have to give up a long bow in order to successfully complete the scavenger hunt. 2d4 plus 2 versus 2d5 plus 3. Let's equip the hammer. Got 3,000 gold pieces to our name. Your primary f way of ga garnering loot is by selling crud, not so much by finding loot piles in this game. Oh, by the by. Uh, if you have a phobia of spiders, look away for a few minutes. That's too easy. We're gonna, We're gonna prevent them from mobbing me. That was too easy. Ah, what a scratch. For almost every enemy in the game, there's three different types. Uh, they'll have more hit points, they'll deal more damage, and they can have different special attack effects. 
Uh, these are easier to spot if you have someone who's rocking Identify Monster. Or you could just know it from a prior playthrough. Or you could have... I have gone code diving to look at various statistics before for things. Let's leave it behind. Or you could look it up uh, on the internet. See, remove fear Let's leave it behind. and awaken. We don't need awaken. Let's we'll leave sell it that. Behind. The goblin shield may be pretty nice, though. Uh, the cleric can use shields, as can the druid. So, it's worth keeping that in mind. Get some more critters over here. Now, Vic is using the harm spell when it's... No. What, what did you get hit with? A disease. I could make a cure disease potion if... if I had granted Princess J2 basic alchemy. Normal alchemy. But I cannot. And we do not have that. So she will be diseased. So J2, first person to be knocked unconscious, first person to be diseased. Good talk. Ah, what a scratch. We'll power Ow. through it. Our wizard eye is gone. Based on the spider colorations, and I think the rats as well though, I think we are still on software 3D. I'm just confused why my items were no longer flickering. Ah, what a scratch. Bats are really dangerous to engage in real time because of how really quick their animation speed is. So, J2, uh, he'll be fine. I promise. I would not lie to you. Griffith would probably lie to you. You probably shouldn't trust Griffith. <laughs> We're looking okay. Um, we, have ex we haven't exactly got a whole lot of spell points to throw down some curing. Got enough for a heal, though. Which can do something. Unfortunately, Vic doesn't have a bow. Equipped, because I didn't bother. Bring on a vision challenge. So, that will be of some issue. Ow. An inability to engage in ranged combat. But thankfully, this abandoned temple is not too difficult. That's probably your most difficult room down there. If you decide to just bumble into that. That's too easy. There's a lot of crud down there. And it can attack pretty quickly. That was too easy. Ow. Ow. Okay. Got a uh, bat over here, uh, who for whatever reason just doesn't feel like playing. Fixed. Be going this way first. Flip this. We see some friendly swordsmen in here. Now these bookcases are containing scrolls, but I'm not bothering to slot them like anyone's inventory. So what's happening is that they're auto being placed into the characters I had selected inventory whenever I went to grab a new one, which was Revocane. So we got some remove fears, some torch lights, some wizard eyes. Those are pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to separate the remove fear here. Just have a bunch of torch lights and wizard eyes. Uh, the, those scrolls are, will be more powerful than what Revocane can currently cast. Through this door, we're actually going to see our final enemies of uh, this temple. Oh, please. Did you see? The lights are now green. We're no longer in a caution area. There's our floor tile that we require. A few books scattered around. Two books. That's Torchlight and Awaken. 
Awaken, we can sell Torchlight we're going to keep to eventually give to J2 whenever he learns Fire Magic, and with that in mind, I'm actually going to grant it them. Poison Spray, Fire Bolt, and Fire Resistance. We're going to keep Fire Resistance. I'm going to chuck Fire Bolt, and I'm going to chuck Poison Spray. Nothing else to fiddle with there. You better watch out. These two swordsmen back there are part of the group uh, that's in this locale to uh, <laughs> to dispatch other folks trying to win the scavenger hunt. But they aren't hostile towards us. And in fact, we could we could leave here without any hard feelings at all. Better watch out. Greetings. Hello there, friend. May I have a word with you? This temple is a pretty nasty place. You should probably watch your back around here. You never know what might want to kill you. Thanks, Sal. You're really friendly. This is a catalyst. Uh, you add this to other potions uh, to increase their... or decrease their potency to whatever the power of the catalyst is. However, I'm pretty sure you have to have normal alchemy in order to do that. Let's leave it behind. Stun. Nah. Ah, typically, this is I typically don't use stun anyway, unless it's like on single target individuals. And even then, like, it's it's likely that I would rather have that character do something else than use stun. Dwarven Dagger, though, I would be. 2d2 plus 2 versus 1d3 plus 3. That's 4 to 6 damage versus 4 to 6 damage. I'd have to pull up my dice porn website for me to, like, specifically, like, gauge the odds of that. Attack. Well, I suppose there is this. No, it's not. Whatever. We'll keep this spike club on. I suppose the reason why that's the same for the attack bonus is because of the dagger skill. Eh. Eh. We'll have we'll have J2 you still use a club. There's a wealthy hat. Obsidian, which is used as a reagent to empower potions. Hmm. Goblin hmm. shield, spiked hmm. mace, body resistance. That doesn't really come up. We're gonna sell that. Hmm. Featherfall, we're gonna have characters who can cast that. Unless everyone falls unconscious. It's not an issue. Hmm. Air resistance. No. Potion bottle, widow sweet berries. And a vat of gold pieces, which we will promptly pick up. Take us up to four of over 4,500 gold, which is not bad. Now! By the way, he's still fine. Don't worry about it. What we are going to do here, though, is uh, engage in a little bit of alchemy. I know, right? I'm going to check... Perfect. This throws with berries into this potion, creating a simple potion of cure wounds, which heals 10 plus the potion's strength hit points. So we're going to heal 11 points to whoever drinks this, in which case, it's going to be Vic. In addition, we can also toss in this Fierna root. I did it again! Get used to J2 saying that. It creates a magic potion, which restores spell points. We can also see the effect of cure weakness here already which just removes the weakness condition. Giving Vic some spell points, which Vic could use to cast heal, or whatever. Just bless, which is really useful. We'll cast that for the dragon. By the way, yes, we're fighting more correct, the pitiless. Just not in this video. Uh, but we're going to use that for a few castings of harm. Specifically, three. I don't, I'm not going to save. Move it! But we will yell Move it! at that guy. Greetings. Your hat, please. I see you have a fine hat there. How about a deal? You give me your hat and we'll, we'll let you keep your lives. You should have accepted my offer. And now, you'll notice yellow caution lights. People are upset about my failure to give them a hat that was literally right behind them. This guy in particular. He's super excited about this. Griffith, press the attack key instead of the shoot key. This is what I get for remapping these things. By default, they're A and S, and I change them to E and F, and I can't remember which is which. 
All right, we're going to go target him first, it seems. Which is fine by me. Except for the fact that he's almost already dead, so he's like, fuck this. So it's time to work on Sal here, who's got a few more hit points. We're fine. We got a longbow for our troubles. That's it. <laughs> You're going to have to get rid of something first. I suppose. Hi. Bye. That's the power, by the way, of Body Magic 3 and this delicious harmed spell. 8 points of damage plus 1 to 2 per point of skill in Body Magic. So we've got 11 to 14 damage. It's a pretty nice spell. We're going to be using it in our fight against Morkarak the Pitiless. Hey. Bye. Oh, please. <laughs> we didn't get touched once. <laughs> Red potion completely unnecessary. Sal can hit you for a nice amount of damage, but it just wasn't an issue for us. Though to be fair, uh, we are we are with Day of the Gods rocking some pretty. Nice strength. Really good, really good. I mean, even even poor sickly Princess J2 the Druid here with her spite club. Making the magic happen. It's 205. Now we have every material required to win the scavenger hunt. Pretty, pretty nice. Mission accomplished. You can hang out the banners and everything. Although we will have to make another red potion. A tragedy, yes. Red potion, seashell, longbow, floor tile, musical instrument. Oh, right, the musical instrument. Damn. Am I willing to spend the 500 gold, or will I just murder her? Yeah? Yeah, this is definitely... Oh, hi. Hi there, little convenience knockoffs. Greetings. <laughs> She's like, the fuck did you call me? <laughs> It's tempting. It's tempting to grab some more skills and sell some stuff. I was thinking about waiting to do it until after I killed the dragon, because I didn't want to have to change like people again for the dragon. I might still do that. So, Alyssa, if you have stealing skill, you can try to steal the loot from her. You can murder her for it. And you pay the 500 gold. I think we'll pay the 500 gold, I guess. I mean, it's useful money and all, but... <sighs> Does that mean I'm going to fight the dragon without giving everyone bow skill? I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what that means. Will I train first? Yeah, I'll probably train. Greetings. Hi. Well, promise to at least take care of it and not use it for firewood. We're going to turn it in. I suppose I'll have to make do without an instrument for the rest of this trip. Maybe I should tell stories instead of sing until I get back home. Okay, and let's make a red potion. I did it again! You did it again. We'll have to get rid of a longbow. Actually, Revocane is the fucking archer, so... <laughs> there we go. We'll just carry this crud with us. What the hell? We're only gonna fight a dragon, no big deal. Hi. His Grace, Lord Markham, Duke of the Western Lowlands. Have you collected everything on the list yet? What took you so long? Almost every group has turned into red potion by now. This is the easiest item to hunt to manage, but better late than never, Elmer. Oh. I just thought of this. Margaret, do you have anything to say for this guy? No, you don't. Margaret disappears after you win the contest. We never visited this guy. He is the Blacksmith Apprentice. He, uh... 
Morkarek is actually named here, too. Okay, he's not called the Pitiless, but Grant does call the Red Dragon of Emerald Isle by name. Been wander out to the Dragon Cage, then it... Kate, 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 Dragon Cage. Morkarek doesn't tolerate strangers very well. I bet the missing people went there thinking his cave was the abandoned temple. They're probably long dead. I'd watched those other contestants, some of them seem ruthless. One particularly nasty group headed to the north side of the island, and I haven't seen them since. I'm surprised at the, at the attention this contest has received. Apparently people are hoping to get on the good side of the contestants for future favors that they win. Grant here, very wise, a very astute apprentice. Seeing the ways of things. I love how I'm also going to turn in this damn longbow, instead of using it on Mark Grant, but here we are. Lord Markham, Beautiful shell, the much like the lowland. ones that Sally sells. This certainly came from Emerald Island. I shall mark the shell off your list. This longbow certainly qualifies for the hunt. Good work. Adventurers indeed. I didn't expect anyone to bring back a tile so quickly. This is certainly a tile from the temple, however, so I shall mark the tile off your list. A fine loot this is. And a wealthy hat. Well, that's all six items. You're the winner of the contest. I suggest you talk to Lord Markham for the details on gaining your fiefdom. My work is done here. Congratulations, you're the new Lords of Harmondale. Isn't it thrilling? You can't imagine how good it feels for me to give this property away to you. All of the benefits and rewards, and of course the responsibilities of governing the town of Harmondale, are now yours. Uh, just sign here. And here. And, and if I could just, just get your initials here. Yes, well, that's that. You're all set, and once again, congratulations. The ship that will take you to your fiefdom awaits you in the harbor. My entourage and I will be taking a different ship out. Just bored whenever you're ready. Uh, note that Harmondale doesn't have harbor access. There's no harbor in, like, the area. Uh, Lord Markham rules over Tatalia, which does have a harbor access. Hmm. Think about that. Anyway. We won the scavenger hunt, everyone. And we got experience for that. Enough to not just train to level 3, but to level 4. Hooray! Uh, so. You level up, as I demonstrated off, in training halls. Training halls uh, will have level caps on how high they can train you. Emerald Islands is 5. Training takes time. A week per level trained. However, let's say I have Flailfish trained for a week. Once. If everyone else trains once, then it only takes one week. If I just train Flailfist and walk out, it takes a week. And then if I walk back in and train Revocane once, now it's a total of two weeks. So if you care about the progression of time at all in this game, which you might for some reasons, the score, you know, an accolade being one of them, but also, like, there's some time-sensitive things in the game, too, uh, then you'll want to keep training levels consistent. Okay. I should probably fix this disease first, I Do guess. Do you need healing? Yes. Go in peace. Yeah. And we murdered the dragonflies that popped up. Waha. So there's not going to be any more for the time being. Currently the 9th of January. But there will be more if we go drain. Which, as a matter of fact, is what exactly I'm going to do. Lucky, Lonnie, one true pairing. They won't be together for much longer. We're going to be sacking Lonnie. Spoiler alert. Mr. Malwick. Hello. I don't believe we have anything to talk about. Very well, then. Uh. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that dialogue since we accepted his proposal. But, well... Yeah, that's something that he'll like. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Uh, gosh. I walked past the training hall, silly Grimoth. We're also going to want membership in these places. Let me just do that while I'm thinking about it, so... That I don't forget. And then I go to Harmondale and it not be done. Save the game, because Grimoth does not want to make a mistake. This is... That episode. Need some training? Yeah! That's the ticket. That's the ticket. It's a foggy day. 
Now the 17th. You're like, but Grimeth, it was the 9th, and then it became the 17th. That seems like a bit more than a week. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> You gonna go hit up the the shrine, the Day of the Gods shrine? Yeah, we probably should. I mean, J2 might fall unconscious again, but we can't control everything in life, can we? Yeah, let's go hit it up. Because before we go, I mean, we could have just trained up twice while we were in the in the hall, but. More dragonflies got vomited out at us, and why don't we go kill them, you know? Yes, yes. Just heal J2 so that she doesn't fall on ganges. Again. Embarrassing everyone involved. So, our, our fight with More Correct the Pitiless is definitely something that's going to be happening next time, and it will be the final video of Emerald Isle. We're gonna spend the rest of this time murdering some dragonflies. People I'm also definitely gonna want to sell stuff before I go to Harmondale, because people will like me more here than they will in Harmondale, for now. Ah, what a scratch. Ow! A congrats to us on being, well, Flailfist, Revocane, Mama Vic, and, uh, J2, Princess ah, J2. What a scratch. On being the new Lords and Ladies of Armandale. Don't, don't think you can scurry away from me. That was too weak. Enemies love to take damn annoying angles to you in this game. You gotta give them credit for trying, right? But I need it doesn't even hurt. Trying explicitly to aggravate you. I wasn't kidding about what this rest of this video would be devoted to, by the way. Well, I suppose I didn't specifically declare it. Well, if you hadn't figured it out, we're gonna train again. We're going to murder some more dragonflies. The money we're getting from the dragonflies pays for our training. And I would get the merchant skill, but it would cheaper, be cheaper for me to hire a merchant first before I grab the merchant skill. <laughs> Life sometimes, you know. Do I want to sell things before fighting Morkarak? No, because I'd still want to grab the damn teacher before I fought him. Because uh, Red Dragon, as it turns out, worth a few experience points. How about that? Need some training? Arr! That's the ticket. That's the ticket. And it's now the 25th. Need to grab a Day of the Gods again, so. <laughs> Hooray. Don't have to think about where I want to put those other skill points. For everyone. There's some trainers that I'm gonna hit up in uh, Harmondale. And who knows where after. Trainers for skills. By the by, this playthrough is intended to introduce Might and Magic 7 to my viewers, uh, some of whom have not even played a Might and Magic game, let alone my, like Might and Magic 7, and while others do very much enjoy this game. Like, for further playthroughs, because I do plan on at least one more playthrough of this game, like, we'll, we'll do more bizarre shit, and I'll show off some of the game-breaking things that, that you can do, too or, easy. I don't know, whatever you might consider to be game-breaking. And we'll skip some of the lore stuff, but I wanted to, like, show off the lore since, you know, cut, but some I folks are fixed. into that for how they enjoy games. And, you know, it's part of the Might and Magic experience, the lore, as far as I'm concerned. I feel like I'd be doing it a service of the game to not show it off. 
We certainly can't see or experience every quest in the game. Oh, please. That just can't be done in one playthrough. It's actually mechanically impossible. But with both playthroughs combined, <laughs> next playthrough uh, will be a bit quicker. Oh, but I am rather familiar that with the game. Too easy. Some technical difficulties and minor confusion aside, it just has been, you know, over eight years since I've last played the game. <laughs> And even with a few hundred hours invested into uh, my Magic 7. <sighs> so much time has passed. Okay, well that takes care of polishing up those dragonflies. They aren't that worth that much experience, but that gold there effectively just pays for our training costs, you know? Free stuff, not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and drink up. One reason to level up before you go fight the dragon would be for extra hit points and spell points, which you can then use on whatever abilities that you might want to use against the dragon. And also in the hopes that should the dragon hit you, he won't one-shot you. Flail Fist, double-digit hit points thanks to Day of the Gods. Pretty nice. Okay. We'll need to grab fire resistance. And uh, there's the fire resistance in front of Morkorax. Casa. I will say, I think this is the first time I've come in here without even just like, I'm not even bothering to give <laughs> like the third character a damn bow. Oh well. Why not the first time? You know, it was once upon a time that I didn't even think this dragon was killable. Like, there were playthroughs where just skip the dragon. And it was it wasn't until our, my brother and I, you know, thought about it. It's like, well, you can't come back to Emerald Isle at all. Get that Wand of Fireballs. Yeah, but it's a red dragon, right? Surely the Wand of Fireballs wouldn't affect a red dragon, right? Well, we'll talk more about Morkarak. And the pros and cons of fighting such a prestigious and powerful red dragon next time. I'll see you then.